Well, hello there, Foo friends. I'm sure you can tell by the sound of my voice why I'm not there with you this morning. I decided you did not need to be subjected to my hacking and sneezing and other things that are going on. I took a quick trip to the East Coast and I think I just spent too much time in elevators. <laughs> anyway, also, I got very off balance. So, you know, when the, we're off balance, the immune system doesn't work very well. Ah, oh, well. All right. So a month or so ago, I did a class and the class was designed to show us what is really going on in the world today and why it's going on in the world today. And to help us find how we individually can get through all of these breaking downs that are going on around us. The culture we have been living in is breaking down. That doesn't mean we have to suffer or struggle. And that's what I want to talk about today. So I'm going to share my screen because I can. So the ultimate path of courage is to follow the breakdown into a breakthrough. That's what we're attempting to do. Now, if we had grown up in an indigenous culture, we would have been being trained in this all of our life from the time we could walk. The first time something didn't come together well, we would have seen how it could be transformed or how we could be transformed to make it better. And so in our culture, that isn't necessarily the case. However, we do honor people who have gotten through. This is, in fact, the Jewish feast today of the tabernacles, Sukkot, and it's about when the people of Israel were living in these tents, basically, things made out of sticks and fabric while they were in the wilderness. And it's also the birthday of the prophet Muhammad, blessed be his name, who's the founder of Islam. It is also Clergy Appreciation Day, and some of us have had to have a bunch of courage to get up and do what we needed to do over the years. Tomorrow, Monday, is the federal observation of Columbus's arrival in the Caribbean, and many people are choosing to focus on it as Indigenous Peoples Day, for which I am very grateful because we have been taught not necessarily accurate versions of history, and more and more people are finding that out. It also happens to be Canada's Thanksgiving Day. And all of these are wonderful examples of the courage that we have seen in others and that potentially we could take on in ourselves. Now, when a breakdown happens, there are basically four responses. The first one is to run away and hide. This is in the Bible, Gideon running away to hide behind the wine barrels, basically. Um, actually, I think it was the grain containers in the granary, but he's hiding behind big things. And then an angel shows up and calls him a man of valor and tells him he's going to help Israel overcome the issues he's afraid of. I think this is an interesting story for us to pay attention to. But if we make a lifetime habit of running away and hiding, usually because that's what we were raised to think you do, that's what our parents did, that's what the people around us did, over time, the shutting down that we are doing every time we run is about repressing and suppressing, repressing the words that we want to say and suppressing the actions we want to act with, which ultimately must result in depression and inability to feel anything but numbness and no motivation to act. Because we've literally over and over again told the body-mind system, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. I'm not paying attention to that. And so ultimately the message is to act and never even come through. A second way that we've been taught in our culture to respond to breakdowns is what in my family we joke as stiff upper chin, <laughs> stiff upper lip. Um, it's swimming against the current, it's pushing on through. And for most people, after 15, 20 years of this sort of thing, we start seeing arthritis and other autoimmune diseases and ever more repetitions of similar experiences. A third approach is to ride the breaking wave. 
catching the motion and finding ways to let it carry us in a direction that feels good, surfing it, right? At least for the moment. And this way of living tends to lead to branching paths of experience and development. The fourth approach is to dive into the depths below the appearance of confusion and chaos and conflict to find the beliefs, understandings, and assumptions that brought us to this place. That then leads us to a greater knowledge of our own self and the possibility of not repeating such experiences again. So if we run away and hide, we're avoiding the conflict and confusion. Often we follow some other person's lead, even when it doesn't feel quite right inside, or we move away because it doesn't feel quite right, or we quit. We just say, I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm not even going to think about this. So I want to tell a story. Let's see. Let's call her Sophia. It means wisdom. Sophia had grown up in a family where everyone avoided conflict and confusion. She was taught very clearly the only thing she could do was run away and hide. She could follow someone else's lead if she wanted to, even against her own inclination. That was pretty uncomfortable, but it didn't look like running away and hiding. Periodically, she would just move away. She couldn't handle this. And often she would just say, okay, I'm done. And she would quit. Now, as I said, this kind of behavior means that she spent years suppressing and repressing her own tendencies, what she would normally say, what she would normally do in the belief that she was doing the right thing by running away and hiding from the conflict. One day, though, in her late 20s, she realized that she was numb. Everything around her was gray. It was awful. She didn't want to live anymore. She didn't want to be on the planet anymore. She didn't feel good about herself. She didn't have any motivation to do anything. She was in severe depression. And in that place, she remembered something that her friends who were doing 12-step programs, because they didn't run away and hide, they simply self-medicated. So they were doing 12-step programs and they talked about a higher power that they could turn to when they couldn't find the answer. So she tried to turn to the higher power. And for days, she was just laying in her gray room in her gray world and feeling, trying to reach out and connect with the higher power that her friends said must be there and was there to help her. And finally, she was aware of a presence. And that presence said, oh, my dear, all of these times that you've run away and hidden, you've missed some marvelous opportunities for lovely experiences. And so you might want to try a different way. Well, Sophia heard that, and she did remember that there is another way. There were only two ways as far as she knew, and that was to push on through, to be, you know, take over, be in charge, make it happen. And so she studied all the books and movies she could about Wonder Woman and women who had been able to be powerful and she became a powerful woman. So whenever a breakdown seemed to be showing up, she would push through. She had a clear vision of what's possible. And if other people couldn't see it, that was too bad. If that they had or suggested didn't fit her vision, she would ignore them and keep on pushing through. And as the chaos got thicker, and the going got tougher, she just pushed harder. Anyone who has set their teeth to make something happen has learned that that isn't good for them. And dentists generally tell us to try to relax our mouths. It also, when we decide we're going to do something regardless, 
we tend to override what's going on in our body and we stop paying attention to what's going on in our body. So we have autoimmune diseases. That is one part of our body fighting another part of our body. So people who are pushing through the breakdowns to try to get to a breakthrough often show up in their 30s with bad teeth and autoimmune diseases. Oh dear. And on top of that, more and more breakdowns around them. Uh, well, that happened to our friend Sophia. And so she took some time off and she found herself taking a vacation on the beautiful Oregon coast. And she was asking for help from that same higher power. She was saying, well, what I did got a lot of things done, but I'm not sure it was the best thing based on how much pain I'm in right now. So at that point, she was aware of a presence guiding her to that lookout platform in Yahats over the breaking waves as they're coming into the Yahats River Bay. And there was all that turbulence and all of that you know, crashing of waves. And she realized that that was a lot like what she had been pushing through all this time. And the present caused her to see that there were surfers riding these waves. And they would catch the wave right as it was breaking and then let, it, let that wave take them in to the shore. And they would end up in different places at different times. So seeing the breakdown coming and flowing with it, wherever it takes you, into a better situation is what happens when we ride the breaking wave. Now, we might find ourselves in a situation that feels more comfortable, more us, one that gives us freedom to try things. Riding the breakthrough to find what it has to offer us and where it might take us is a very powerful tool and it doesn't lead to illness. Wow. <laughs> but sadly, she woke up in her mid forties and she realized, oh my goodness, I don't know anyone closely. I've gone from here to there to the other place over and all these different places. I know a bunch of people. I've met a bunch of people, but nobody really knows me. Ah, uh, that's a key. Nobody really knows who I am and what's going on inside me. So the next time she realized how lonely she was, and how unhappy she was with how her life had taken her, where her life had taken her. She said to the higher power, help me understand what would work more effectively. And once more, she was guided to that platform at the Yahats Bay, the park there. And what she saw was a seal, a seal swimming out from the river into the ocean. And whenever that seal came up on a wave that was about to break, it would dive under the wave. So it didn't experience any crashing or turbulence. It just experienced more wonderful water. And sometimes that seal would come up with something that it clearly was enjoying to eat or to just experience. She got the message and she began to do something that would help her go inside. And many people are doing this today, aren't they? There's lots of mindfulness going on out there. There's lots of people studying meditation and learning to go within. And we want to look below the surface, below the confusion, the conflict and the chaos and find the patterns. First, we want to recognize, oh boy, this is not the first time I've experienced things falling apart. And then we want to look at what had happened before, who were involved, what was happening, and then begin to understand what could free us from that pattern. Now, what can free us from that pattern? What most people call forgiveness, I call releasing and replacing. It's letting go of what the appearance was 
in favor of what was actually happening. So if I happen to remember a situation of abuse, I can remember, oh yeah, every time there were those words, I love you. This was someone saying, I love you the only way they could in that moment. If I happen to remember a time when everything seemed to be falling apart and my life was just going to pieces, ah, there's something new trying to happen here that is even better and more wonderful for me, and so on. So we want to release all the feelings that we've held against people in those situations and replace those feelings and upsets with the realization that every single step has brought us to where we are and is going to carry us beyond this moment. So when we get upset about the apparent breaking downs around us, we want to look at where is that upset coming from? To what extent is it really affecting me? To what extent am I able to do something about it? And when we are clear about that, then we know what our action is. So we realize that old beliefs and assumptions were driving our actions and reactions, but new understandings can lead us to whole new interactions, whole new levels of action and reaction. And so the breakdown becomes a breakthrough. So whenever we are encountering a breakdown, we get to choose. And we will pay consequences if we take any of the first three. But if we can allow ourselves to be like the seal, that seal at Yahats, and dive down into, under the chaos, and discover that flow that is ours to be moving with, we will end up exactly where we intend, just as the seal does at the river in Yahats. Well, that's my message for today. And I very much appreciate everyone's flexibility for making it possible for me to do it this way. And I'm going to edit out all the little coughs and such so that you don't have to listen to that. And I'll look forward to seeing you all when I'm there in a month. And I think then we're talking about change. Oh, good. Blessings all. Bye-bye.